if we know that Football World doesn't rest over the weekend, well, what have we had over the weekend? We've had Tyler Boyd, I think two weeks ago, scored against Benfica. Yeah, they lost, but who else in there? Who else in New Zealand scored against Benfica? Put your hand up. Not many, if any. Tyler scores against Benfica and they play 60 minutes against Porto in the uh, whatever their stadium's called. Any, what is the stadium of Porto? Estadio, 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 whatever. Ryan plays a full game uh, and Peck again in another win. All right, nice go, let's go. Go and get warmed up. Not living in the academy is like living in a big castle. If you have a look outside my window, it's like living in a spaceship. You have to walk the talk. So you can't say something to the young, because remember all the young players are really smart. So you can't tell them to do something if you're not capable or wanting, willing to do it yourself. It's 24 seven. And there's a lot of things that we talk to the kids now about, you know, like getting, like being very conscientious, keeping things tidy, keeping your life tidy. So, you know, like I have to keep this place tidy. The, the academy needs to remain tidy. We understand how we want to play. So there's, there's a philosophy based around on how we want to play. Everything then must be based around those values. You know, you can walk around the academy and I've said before, there's all these signs up saying things, but you have to live, live, live those values, and particularly the trainers. So we, we play a high pressing game. We're pressing all the time. We're all, uh, in transition. We want to, so it's easy for coaches to say, yeah, I play a high pressing game and I'm interested in transition. But then you go and watch their training session and there's no high pressing and there's no transition. So that starts with us straight away. So even when they're coming together with a 6v2 or a 7v3 rondo at the start, everything's about pressing and everything's about that transition right from the start. As soon as they get up in the dressing room getting changed, it's a transition from their mufti gear to their training gear. That's got to be quick. And they've got to press each all the time. I don't think the football brain really understands the difference of being in the new camp or being here at Ole. It's just the brain, like the brain doesn't go, oh, I'm playing on the new camp today. Um, I'm going to be better. It, it doesn't get that. So it's all to, it's all to do with the experience. It's so you got to, I, we, I have to create the intensity that I think is going on elsewhere around the world. It doesn't matter where you are as long as that intensity is happening. So I came here in 2013. Um, I was playing professionally over in Scandinavia. So I was living in Sweden. And at the time, Nate Winkle had been the CEO here. And he's a fellow Minnesotan. If you know me really well, you know I love fly fishing. So I'd wanted to come to uh, New Zealand for years for fly fishing. So I came here sort of on a whim, just finishing my playing career, wanted to get into coaching. I sort of thought if the football was poor, I could go fly fishing. I uh, got here, met Declan Edge, and all that I had heard about Declan was, you're going to come here and you're going to meet our technical director. He's a little bit of a crazy guy with a very different vision of how the game should be played. I tell people very often, you know, I, I played professionally, I played in uh, the university system for 25 years in the United States. And within three or four weeks of being at LA, three or four months, I learned more about football than I had in 24, 25 years. You'll see when I show you around things like, the emphasis is always on the team, the, the group, and never the individual. But how, we, how the coaches speak is constantly Addressing that issue there is like you, there's no individuals here. You are all you're all here for each other. So if you go upstairs, this is all this is all uh, re been recent. All this turf being put down. We're trying to develop the academy more as a a place where the, all the kids can come and all the players can come and be very relaxed. They can come in here and just have a little bit of fun and play football. Like when when the boys come back from Auckland City and they've only been away for a couple of months, they, it's changed again. Like everything changes here all the time, nothing remains the same. But what does remain the same is the philosophy, the mythology, uh, and how we go about our business. That remains pretty constant. I always say that if I ever get my A license, which we'll see how that goes, yeah. and I have to do my pro license and I have to do a thesis, that's really my thesis. Yeah. So this is, the, this is uh, all my experience over the last 10 years up on the whiteboard here basically. So this is where I live and this is where I work. So it's all the same. I have all my shirts up here. There are uh, West shirts, Waikato shirts. I think I have Ryan shirt here against Peru. Yeah, but don't eat the marshmallow. Don't, don't eat the marshmallow. It was uh, a, a, an experiment that was done over, say, 30, 40 years by a guy. Mm -hmm. And basically, he, he put kids in a room, yep. gave him a marshmallow. He said, if you don't eat it, I'll give you another one in, say, 20 minutes. But you, you can't eat the first one. 
Uh, and he did it all around the world, in Asia, he did it in Africa, he did it in Europe, he did it all over the world. The kids that, the kids that didn't eat the marshmallow were willing to wait and be patient. Uh, when they went back 30, 40 years later, they were the most successful in their uh, relationships, their business, their careers, everything, versus the ones that wanted to eat the marshmallow. So it's, it's the ability for the young players, particularly here in New Zealand, to, 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 to delay gratification. Yeah, they can go and get ready. Get out and get ready. So, look at, well, the, these boys will come through now. I'll be down at 10. I see you at 10. Get down there and just start messing around. Hopefully, fingers crossed, like I'm trying like hell now, is to get out and get onto the grass, which we all love doing, and get out and start working with the kids, because that's, that's the best bit. Is everybody here? 16 players. Yeah. Ask for the ball. I'll kick it into the square and it's away. So, uh, look up. Blake, were you at Tovo? What did he tell you? Eyes up. Check the two in the middle. Uh, your technique is not your problem. It's the two in the middle. Eyes up. Check where the two are. Play. They're the two piggies. Don't let them have it. Eyes up. Eyes up. Hips. I, I often say one of the greatest things for the Olay Academy player is that they can see players that have come before them and, and gone and been very successful. So, you know, Ryan Thomas is a key person here. Everyone, oh, you guys talk about Ryan a lot, but it's not just Ryan. It's, you know, it's players like Harry Edge, Ryan, Tyler Lizette, Tyler Boyd. You know, we can rattle off names now. Kyle Adams, Callum McCow. It's his, you know, the player comes here, they're not only learning, but they're also seeing players that have come before them. What do we do with the player is we provide an environment where they're playing football. And that sort of sounds, well, that, well of course that's what you do, but that's actually not, that's not what is happening at football academies around the world. Our kids are coming here. We are, uh, we're working in a certain way. We have a curriculum. We, we, you know, we play small-sided games. The curriculum is based around rondos, small-sided games, positional play games. But the kids come here and they, they do, they play football. They are not being, you know, put into lines, they're not dribbling through cones, we're not doing random obscure shooting drills, we're, you know, we're, we're not breaking the game down and un, into unrecognizable pieces and then asking kids to do things. And so that's, that goes back to what is our philosophy around learning, is as soon as you can get to the whole, as soon as you can get to the game, uh, you're well on your way. So the kids come here and they play football and they have a lot of fun. And they do that from about the ages of seven when they're skill builders, all the way through to the Western Suburbs first team. If you don't know what a rondo is, it's keep away, monkey in the middle, you know, 6v2s, 4v1s, uh, 7v3s, positional play with neutral players, you know, so you always have numbers advantages, and then also uh, just games. So playing football, small sided games, 3v3s, 4v4s, seven asides. Um, I already alluded to this kind of previously as there's a nice quote, I think it's Sir Isaac Newton. If I can see farther, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. And that's why the kids love coming here. So th they can see that there's a process in place. And this is why the parents love it as well. There's a process in place. You get a kid in at a young age and he comes, he or she comes, and they'll do this work, say for about, you know, anywhere from five to 10 years, a little bit longer, 15 years. Their player is somewhat gonna look like this at the end. So you have a player now coming in at age seven, and you have, I think we have 30 players at US universities, and we have about 10 players now on professional contracts. And so if I, get, if I send my player in, son or daughter in here, seven, 10, this is round about what he's gonna look like. Um, she's gonna look like when they're 18, 19, 20. And so behind the academy, underpinning everything is a ethos of constant and never ending improvement, lifelong learning, uh, becoming as best as you can be, all that rhetoric, but you know, we're, we're, we think we're walking the talk. The, the, the quicker we can impact the kids on, not the football stuff, like make it very clear, which I say to most coaches around the country as well, is like, trust me, making a player good enough to play professional football is not difficult. It's really easy. The difficult bit is getting their mentality and getting them humble enough or gracious enough and getting them to understand the ups and downs and, and the life of a football, that's difficult. And that takes more time, but, but bringing them on the pitch and getting them to kick with their left foot and right foot and make some decisions based on, that's not that, that's not that difficult. So like, do I measure, do I measure success based on how much money my players are making? 
that's a, not a very good definition of success maybe, versus you know, how they go about their day in preparing to be a better football player and a better human being than they were, say, the, the next day. And having that attitude. That's hard work. Measuring success with money is like saying that the Mafia are successful. Um, I always use two moments as well, recently, two moments that nobody can buy, money can't buy, is uh, when I went to watch Ryan play in the arena at Ajax. It was a fantastic moment. But then recently, going up, even going up to Auckland City and watching Harry and Callum and Owen playing all together for Auckland City. Same moment, same feeling. And you, you, know, you, can't, you, can't, you can't buy those moments. They're the time. I know the quality of the players that are coming through. At 17, 18, I talk to other coaches around the world. I talk to other coaches. And this, like the, the, the players are good. Um, and so I think we can be, I think New Zealand can be really, really good in football. Like I think we have um, the good characteristics. I mean, the All Blacks are good. They were good at cricket. Like, why, why, aren't, we, why aren't we good at football? Because the, the kids are playing football. The obstacle that I'm having at the moment is not being able to get my players now uh, playing together in the National League. And obviously, the, you know, the question, I, the question I ask for New Zealand football a little bit is like, I need some help to be able to get these players that I'm working with in those top leagues um, rather than having a lot of um, gates closed and walls being built around that not happening. I've got to presume, I'm, I must presume and I'm, that New Zealand football are trying to do the right thing. I must presume that first. I must presume that they're not up there trying to not do the right thing. They want to do good. They want New Zealand, like I, I, I think they want the 17s and the 20s and the national team to do well. I've got to presume that. And then it must be down to, obviously the next bit then is like, then they need to be, maybe they need to learn and be educated. Like, they were, so let's say that they are working hard and they're doing the best they can, but they're a little bit like one of those mice on those things that go round and round and round. They're just not getting anywhere. And so I would, I'm challenging and saying, I think there's a better way. I think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a way that New Zealand football can be better. Because like, I, I don't play the political game very good. Because you have to tell, what do they say? You have to, Declan, you have to learn to tell white lies. <laughs> or, or don't say that at that time to that person. Because he's not, that's not, so, so I don't play that game very well. I just have to, you know, we, we have to keep doing what we're, which we're trying to do, which is like look after our players. Um, our players are the most important to us at all time. And all the decisions that we will make and the decisions that we'll continue to make for Ole and Wests will, will be uh, for the player. Not for me, not for us. Uh, not for the coaches, but for the players. I, I, I think oh, the Ole way and the way that we do things is suited for the New Zealand player. It is designed around the New Zealand player. It's designed around the New Zealand mentality. It's designed around the New Zealand childhood and, and, their, and, and how they're brought up and the lifestyle that they lead. And the training is designed around the Kiwi player and the length of time that it takes for the New Zealand player. So I would, I would like to see that being endorsed in more places than it currently is. In the staff handbook is uh, like a motivational tool we use, is the YouTube video, uh, the Wolves of Yellowstone, of how wolves change rivers. So you had the Yellowstone Park was dying. This is one of, you know, one of the greatest national parks in the world. And what they did was they reintroduced the predator, they reintroduced a wolf into the environment, not knowing that the wolf would drastically change the entire landscape of the park, from the rivers to the way the mountains function. And so we use that as a motivation tool, is introduce a predator, and so in this case, we're referring to ourselves as the wolf, into the landscape of New Zealand football. And from that, you can have dramatic change. We think, we're not saying that we got it perfect. We're not saying that we're the bee's knees, but we are facing the right way, and we think we're on track. And we think we can improve and get better, obviously. Um, but at least we are giving our players mostly the right opportunities. I would like to see that. Uh, to more kids, like not just the kids that come to our life.